Okay, okay, okay. It's gone a little bit poorly in our last few sitting go strategy videos, but hopefully today will be the turnaround. Hopefully we can start to win some cash monies again and uh, start printing them dollars. Uh, if you guys managed to miss our previous uh, sit and go strategy videos, be sure to check them out in the description below. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna play some play play some hypers now. Let's 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 do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, we're hopping into two more games here. We've got another one thousand dollar buy in, and we've got another two hundred dollar buy in. So the same setup that we just had a second ago. But yeah, this time we're gonna do some winning instead of some losing. We might even get a third game up here. Uh, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna unregister that one for now. I want to focus on on two games. I want to focus on two games at the moment. So uh, yeah, this ended up being a five reg, reg game here. I was sitting in the lobby when it was four uh, five of us in there, and it's pretty late at night. There's no other real regs online, so I wasn't super worried about somebody getting in the game that would. Uh, that would make it a little bit tougher, you know? Basically, like Mickey696 is done here. This guy is a high stakes PLO cash reg from what I remember. So, I mean, he has Supernova Elite as well. I, mean, I remember playing a few singles with him back in the day when this was my main game, but I can't imagine that he's too amazing at the format. You know, while he is probably a better overall, more well-rounded poker player than me, and by that I mean like, if we were to play like 100 big blind cash, he'd probably fucking kill me. You know, if we're playing like 40 or 50 big blind heads up, he'd probably fucking kill me. But in a six max uh, hyper turbo sit and go, where stacks are never really bigger than 25 big blinds, I would imagine I have an edge versus him. But we're gonna pop over to the 200 because this is way more exciting because we have two kings. So like I was saying before, preflop raising sizes. I, I think that if you guys are playing the small stakes, I think you can definitely get away with making it uh, smaller than 2.2. I mean, 2.2 is a totally fine raise uh, size to have, like, just in in all positions except for the button in any really buy in any format, any buy-in. I'm also coming in for a small blind raise here, trying to induce with the two tens. I mean, he did shove the eight seven suited before, so I should probably limp to induce again. But I generally think that people probably raise a, a three bet shove over our raise here quite wide, especially a player like Geo. Um, I'm going to bet the, the tens here. I want to I want to go more into this hand and this board texture when he has just called the big blind more. Uh, but I just want to play the hands first. And we check back with the kings in the two hundred. Even with two tables, it can get hectic to try to induce a bluff from uh, from Toril here on the turn. And he has gone ahead and bet, so I'm going to be pretty happy about it. The river's not great, but I'm just going to call it down and expect that he has a lot of worse value hands and some bluffs. And he rivers the straight. He had a double gut shot on the turn. Yeah, we'll review that hand as well. We'll, we're going to review both these hands. We're still playing the one in the 1K, though. This is a pretty terrible turn card. And this is an equally bad river card. I guess we have to check fold. This is like an insanely bad turn in river. And we're going to go into more more why. But it's mostly because it's a lot more likely that he has a 9 or a 7 when he check calls the flop. And the, the even bigger problem is we can't check call this because our two tens block his straight draws that he's going to be bluffing with on the river here. It's just the absolute worst run out possible, I think. I guess like king queen uh, of spades is probably an equally bad run out. But for different reasons. Um, yeah, I just can't really see us calling here. Okay. So let's review the king's hand first. We come in for a raise. Like I was talking about, 2.2x can easily just be your standard in any game that you play. Uh, we see a call from the big blind. We see a queen nine three, very dry board. We can go both ways on this. We can bet uh, to get value, or we can check if we have an aggressive opponent. Uh, and we think he's going to be bluffing a lot on the turn because, like I said, Toral is quite aggressive. I know he calls a wide range preflop, which can be seen by him calling with 7 5 offsuit. Um, and also, this is just a super dry texture, so we're not getting much action when we bet. So we do decide to check back. Six on the turn. Uh, before we come back to that, we're going to shove in the cutoff with the 11 big blinds and the ace 10 suited. Oi, oi, oi. This is a bad spot for us. Now we have a king, I and we're, we have a two aces. Well, that is not going to be the hand. It's not started off great. It is not started off great. I'm not going to opt. To ah, am I going to opt to shove the king six on the button here? Giggy Haps calls really wide, though. I think I'd shove king eight for sure. I think that's what we're going to go with. 
All right, so let's continue. Oh, no, we can't even... I mean, I can get the sit and go back up the lobby so we can review the uh, Ten's hand. Because that was a pretty interesting one, I think. We were on the turn. But we checked it back. Now we're expecting lots of bluffs from him on the uh, on the turn. And we do see a bet of 40 chips. We have shoved all in, though, in the 200 dollars 6 max hyper. Mm -mm. Are we going to get it through, or are we going to get called... That's a really good flop. Oh, that's such a bad turn. Oh my goodness me. How do we lose after that flop? He only had four outs and we have like the redraw to the entire world. Okay, well, let's review these hands because we had some interesting hands. But yeah, here we go. So he bets the turn 40. We just call because like I said, we think he's bluffing a lot of the time. And if he's bluffing, then we need to leave him room to bluff further. Now, I know what you're saying. You check back the flop. You only called his 40 chip bet on the turn. You let him get there on the river. You deserve to lose the hand. Now that's like not really how our brain should be working. In some situations, like we had the 9-5 earlier, you need to protect your hand um, because there's so many bad turn cards, so many bad river cards, just so many bad outcomes for the hand. Whereas in this situation, when we have two kings on a queen 9-6-3 board with two spades, we're not really worried about too much. You know, we can't really be worried about a backdoor flush draw or a backdoor straight draw. Like, all of these hands, is, it's kind of whatever if he gets there because our hand is so strong and we're not scared of that many cards. Basically, we're not scared of him making making like a better one pair hand. So if we're not if we're not scared of him making a better one pair hand, he has to make like a way better hand than us. You know, he's gonna make like a straight or some sort of two pair. So yeah, we just call. Expect a lot more bluffs on the river. The river's not great because it does bring in the jack-10 straight draw, which is definitely going to be in his range. Also, I mean, queen-8 and 9-8 and make sense. The, the river, no matter what river it is, except for like a deuce, is probably going to bring some, uh, some you know, better hands and like some two-pair combos and some straights. But I don't really think that 7-5 is like... 7-5 does make sense as well because, like we said, he is flatting with 7-5. In the in the big blind here, and when he, with two with a double gut shot on the turn, it definitely makes sense for him to lead out. Uh, but yeah, he bets a hundred on the river, and at this point, I don't think it makes sense for us to raise because one, I think he's be bluffing a lot of the time, so we're not getting value from that, and two, I think it's pretty tough for him to call with a worse value hand when we raise just a one pair hand. Like if he has queen ten here, queen jack, those are the hands that we're trying to get called by with the raise, and those are probably like two of the only hands he's gonna call. All better hands that call when we raise. Are all hands that call when we raise are going to be better hands than ours. Like queen eight, queen nine, queen six, nine eight, nine six, seven five, jack ten, ten seven. You know, hands that are just like better than our hand. So it just makes a ton of sense for us to call. Expect to see a bluff a lot of the time. Expect to see a bunch of worse value hands. Potentially, he could even be betting like a ten nine type of hand here for value. So just an easy call. And we are going to see the seven five. We're going to see the bad news that he rivered a straight. Um, but yeah, I think overall, definitely well played and don't really see us being able to do much else. I mean, again, you could be betting the flop, but versus this player specifically, when I know he's flatting a wide range that includes a hand like 7-5 offsuit, so many hands are just going to automatically check fold the flop, and I think a player like this is going to bluff with a lot of them on turn, so I want to give him a little bit of rope to hang himself. Alright, on to, these guys are playing heads up in the Sinigo still. Onto the pocket 10 sand. Now, because we're out, we are sitting over here, we're not sitting in the regular seat anymore. But yeah, let's let's watch the hand. I think um, all in all, it's probably better to flat the limp in the, in the small blind here than it is to raise like we did. I'm not sure actually. I, I would raise with nines because I think nines are a bit too weak. Eights for sure. Eights I might open push. We do want to be open pushing these hands a percentage of the time as well because we need to be balancing our open shove for uh, 15 and a half big blinds here with our open shoves for 15 and a half big blinds with like ace two offsuit, you know, queen nine suited king 10 off suit we're shoving all of those hands for 15 big blinds here so we need to be shoving some good hands like pocket 10s pocket jacks even up to pocket aces uh it's all about balance these sit and goes a lot of them uh so yeah we, we do end up raising which again i don't i don't hate i think that it's very close between raising and just limping in also shoving i think all three i think you need to be doing all three maybe maybe limping or, or raising is, is a better strategy i don't really know because i don't personally have a like small blind strategy at the moment in these games because I'm, I'm I'm so I'm so removed from six max hyper turbos at the moment, um, but yeah we do end up raising and he calls, so we see a decent flop for our hand and I say decent flop because a lot of his now not not a lot of his but a lot of people in the big blind here with 15 and a half big blinds deep when we raise a small blind, 
a vast majority of regulars, especially especially at a lower limit, so at a one to uh, thirty dollar, one dollar to thirty dollar limits, are gonna not have uh, too many aces in the big blind here when they just call, because they're gonna be three bet shoving most of those pre flop for fifteen big blinds. So this is an even better uh, flop and a better hand for us in like say like a fifteen dollar six max hyper. Um, so yeah, we are going to go ahead and bet the flop. Because also, we will be betting this flop the vast majority of the time when we've raised pre-flop. Because we need to be bouncing uh, with our bluffs that are trying to take it down on an ace high board. Because again, we don't expect Geo Manusis to have too many ace x in his range. Because he would shove a lot of those pre-flop. But at the high stakes in a $1,000 game, he definitely understands that. So he's going to be mixing in some ace x hands that he wants to call in the big blind. Instead of just uh, like blindly 3-bet shoving them all. So we go ahead and bet. 75 chips, about half pot. We do have the Ten of Hearts, backdoor flush draw as well. Now, when he calls here, I'm going to assume a few things. I'm going to assume that he can have some straight draws. You know, like at 8, 6, 10, 8, jack 8 even, jack 10. Uh, the problem with having 10, 8 and jack 10 is we, or even 10, 6, is that we block the 10s because we have 50% of the 10s in the deck. So it's a lot more unlikely that he has a hand like jack 10 or 10, 8 or 10, 6. So we're going to expect his calling range to be primarily 9x and 7x. So he does go ahead and call the flop, and we see a 9 on the turn. So if we think that his range is, is you know, 90% 9x and 7x, or so, maybe, maybe not that much, maybe 75% 9x and 7x, that means that 37.5% uh, of the time, he is going to make trips here and, you know, be better than our hand, and we only have two outs to make a better hand now. So we're going to have to slow down here and stop betting, because now all of a sudden it doesn't make sense for us to bet since he's probably not calling a second barrel here with like 7-6 or 7-5 or any 7 for that matter. So we're not getting called by any worse hands and only better hands like 9x and the few aces that he does have in his big blind calling range are going to uh, are gonna call of course. So he really only has better hands when, when we bet the turn and he calls us. So we need to slow down and check. And we do and he checks it back. Um, totally reasonable, I think, with a 7, with an ace, with a 9. I don't think he wants to be betting here very often. Um, I do think he might want to bet some of his bluffs here, but I don't think he wants to bet any of his value. And actually, if he's not betting any of his value, then he probably doesn't want to be betting any of his bluffs either. He probably wants to be checking back with some of his bluffs uh, that are usually going to be straight draws and, uh, and be bluffing the river if we check to him a, a, third, a second time. Also... His, he does have some, like, king highs. You know, he does have some, like, king three offsuits in his range that he called preflop to defend in position and that he floated the flop with because he has uh, a very good high card. So he definitely does have some king highs that would become great bluffs on the seven river. But it, it doesn't really matter if he's bluffing here because the amount of value hands he has vastly outweigh the amount of good hands uh, or the amount of bad hands, bluffs that he has. But that being said, the problem also with uh, with always folding here is we open ourselves up to exploitation because we very rarely take this line with a seven or a nine, which means that we don't really ever have the nuts. Um, and we only sometimes take this line. We might put out like a, a value bet with like ace queen or ace king or ace jack. So it's kind of difficult for us to have any super huge hands here on the river. Also, we might be balancing even more our preflop shoving range by shoving ace king, ace queen, ace jack. So it's kind of difficult for us to have a value hand here. So we will have to call this with this bet on the river from him uh, sometimes. Of course, we're starting with a check. Uh, but yeah, basically, because we can't have any really good hands, we are certainly going to have to be calling here sometimes. I just don't think that this was the time to call. But yeah, some, some percentage of the time, we're going to have to for sure. So he's definitely going to value bet a 7 like this as well. And I would assume at this point, after I've checked twice to him, that he will probably bet an ace like this as well. So if I think he's betting all of his value hands this size of 197 on the river, um, and like I said, I think that he has a lot more value hands than bluffs, we just can't really call. It's just so uh, th so much of his range consists of 9x and 7x on the flop, and both of those have made a full house on the river. And we're just sitting with 10s and 9s with an ace kicker, and we just, we just don't feel very confident about our hand now. So we do end up making the fold. And yeah, that was a... Uh, Quite a long explanation. All right, you guys, we did not win in that session, but uh, thank you for tuning in for another sit and go strategy video. And let me know if you liked uh, the uh, content in this one uh, below and be sure to subscribe to the channel. It is uh, free and helps a brother out. 
um, and you will get notifications when we release a future videos. We are going to be releasing a few more of these. Hopefully, we can win some cash monies in the next one. It's cello time, boys. Check it out.